All right. Good evening, all of you. Welcome to this webinar about how to do an MBA without work experience. Uh, we created this webinar very specifically to address a lot of questions that come from students, especially students who are in college. Uh, the idea was to make sure that they have a very uh, good idea on what exactly they need to do, if they, especially if they are looking at pursuing a management career. So we have collated a lot of information in this webinar. We also have a special guest uh, whom I will talk about uh, in a few minutes. So before we get started, let me just quickly set the agenda here. Uh, here we'll first begin with introduction. We'll talk about what are the different deferred programs here. Uh, we'll specifically also talk about the ISB YLP program. And finally, in the end, I'll take Q&A. Uh, if you have specific questions, please post in the Q&A window or on the chat window. Uh, what I will do is we'll take up questions in the end. Uh, I want to make sure that um, all of you, uh, I will address, uh, we will try to address most of the questions which are in the scope of this webinar. So make sure you post it. Uh, on the Q&A window uh, so that we help address all the questions that you have throughout the session. Cool. So let me just quickly introduce myself. Hi, I'm Shrikala. I'm the co-founder of Crackverbal. I head product and admissions here at Crackverbal. Uh, I, I work for Hewlett Packard HP for a long time. Um, I'm also one of the um, fellows of the ISB Goldman Sachs Foundation. Uh, 10,000 Women Entrepreneur Program. I'm also part of the Cherry Blair Foundation where I help and mentor uh, women entrepreneurs across the world. Uh, obviously, I have been part of a lot of MBA journeys of a lot of students. So I have been privileged uh, in the last uh, over a decade helping these students get into top schools. A quick background about ourselves and this year has been really great for us. Uh, we've got some really good uh, you know, results from people across programs, people who have got into MBA, MIM, MIS. So here, here is a glimpse of people who have got into uh, a few students that we could put into, put onto this slide. People who have got into top schools this year. Uh, people who have got into Cornell, McDonough, Tepper, you know, Oxford, ISB, a lot of schools. Uh, here are the mentors who helped made this happen. Uh, these are mentors who are from top schools across the world again, uh, who help us work with students, uh, help with their profiles, help with their applications while they are at the last part, which is once they are done with their GMAT, when they are starting with their applications. These are the mentors who are responsible for these uh, success stories. And a free resources, some free resources to get you started. Uh, Crackable has one of the largest uh, subscribers in this space. Uh, we have close to, you know, 23,000 plus subscribers. So all of you, uh, there's a lot of great content here across different, different uh, topics, uh, especially if you're looking at a management career, uh, right from what are the career options you could choose post an MBA to profiles that we evaluate to, uh, you know, specific topics around GMAT and GRE, which is also something, something that we are covering in this YouTube channel. So please make use of it. Apart from YouTube, obviously, we have a lot of webinars and ebooks like the webinar we have today. Uh, we have uh, recordings of these webinars. This webinar is also live on YouTube. Uh, so, all of you who are looking at any kind of, uh, you know, future help or understanding of different programs, please make sure uh, you are part of all the webinars. Most of these webinars are on weekends, uh, which will help you attend, you know. Uh, I'm, uh, you know, if you're busy during the weekdays, you can always attend or view the recordings of these videos. Uh, some great blogs that we've really put together uh, and obviously profile evaluation. Uh, if you're specifically looking at your specific profile and you need more help around it, you can use our Crackable website. We will love to uh, help you and walk you through and give you a right direction on how you want to go about it. Cool. So let's get started. So let me just get started with what exactly are deferred programs, right? So uh, deferred programs basically is uh, specifically focused on students uh, who are either in the final semester or in the third year. This is also open for master's degree students. Um, uh, this is, uh, and you, you know, what you could do is you could apply, you could go through the entire uh, admission process. Uh, for the deferred programs and you get a confirmed admit 
before you actually go ahead and join the course and uh, the way it works is you know you need at least 2 to 4 years of time uh, that is you need to work for at least 2 to 4 years that's the maximum timeline they give after your graduation to work get, gain some professional experience before you go ahead and join the course so that's typically what deferred programs are uh, you need to take your GMAT and GR, GMAT or GRE for this test. If you're specifically focusing on international schools for international candidates, you could e either take TOEFL or IELTS. If you're looking at US schools, maybe TOEFL. If you're looking at other schools, IELTS. Uh, we would specifically be talking about the YLP program in a while. Uh, this is more around the schools abroad. So what are the different kind of deferred programs we have? Obviously, at home, you know, in India, we have the ISB Young Leadership Program. Uh, again, like I said, we will talk a little bit more about it in a while. In US, we have something called the HBS 2 plus 2 program. Uh, here again, like I said, as deferred programs, people and students in college can apply. Uh, you can also, um, you, know, uh, you know, you apply if you're in the master's program, uh, then you work for two to four years and then go back uh, you have something called the Stanford deferred enrollment again a similar thing you every all these schools have similar criteria Chicago Booth scholars program future year scholar program at Darden Yale silver scholars program this is slightly different here what happens is again uh, you can apply to this program you go and study for a year and the second year is completely on internships a lot of these programs are, you know, funded heavily. Uh, you go and join the same MBA class. However, uh, the number of students that actually join through these kind of program are around, you know, each class, if you're looking at, say, a class of 1,000 or 900 plus in, say, Howard, uh, around 100 to 115 are from the deferred uh, program. Uh, there are a lot of scholarships given for international students. So if you are all from college or, you know, if you're looking at applying to these deferred programs, either you're doing your master's, you could evaluate these. Most of these programs also look at 16 years of graduation experience, especially the ones in US. So you might want to check that also whether you, uh, when I say 16 years, it's 12 plus four, right? So it's 12 years till your 12th and then four, which is typically your engineering. People who have done three years of um, uh, you know, BSc or BCom or something back in India, the way it is, uh, you might want to check with them or you might want to take an additional course to make it a 16 year program. So that could be something you could look at. Uh, Europe has, IESC has something called a young talent part, again, a similar concept. So all these programs are the ones that focus on, uh, they, they look at a specific aspects. So what you have to understand is these are all top schools. Uh, these are all people who are looking at very strong candidates who could be potential MBAs or, uh, you know, who could be uh, very good with respect to what they have done in your, uh, in your college time, which also means there has to be a good academic record, which is, uh, you know, very, very important, especially if you're applying as international candidates. Uh, the second thing that they would want to look at is um, what are the aspects of leadership that you have shown uh, in college or school? What has been your extracurricular activities? What exactly have you focused on with respect to, uh, you know, other aspects of your profile? Uh, GMAT will be a very important aspect here because you are competing with people again across the world. Like I said, there are 100 to 115 seats across the world, right? So this is a global uh, program. Uh, I, again, like I said, I'm talking about the schools abroad and... Um, which also means that uh, you have to highlight a lot of things because you will be competing with people, you know, like uh, very recently I was working with someone who was from, uh, you know, Berkeley, right? He's an undergrad student in Berkeley or there was someone uh, who is an undergrad in, you know, some other program, say, uh, you know, Oxford, right? So these are the kind of people who are applying. So you also have to make sure that you put your profile really strong. You make your profile really strong. You do various things so that inter so that you gain a lot of, you know, understanding on various kind of aspects of what you could do post MBA, right? So these are the kind of things you need to focus on, especially when you're looking at these kind of programs, right? So um, uh, 
whatever GPA you have, again, your GPA will be equated to uh, something which is under the global scale. So there are some websites like wes.org where, you know, most schools might ask you to do that. So you might want to go and uh, get your GPA converted into a four point scale and see where you stand. Uh, again, there is no formula to it. It's not that this much percentage with good extracurricular will get you through. You also have to have a very good GMAT score, like I said, or a GRE score. So make sure uh, you have a very competent score in that aspect also. Right. So these are the things I would want you to focus on. Any specific questions here for foreign schools? Because we have our special guest here who's going to specially talk about the ISB Young Leadership Program. Again, this uh, we conducted this uh, webinar specifically for people because a lot of students were asking us about this program. So we wanted to make sure that uh, we get someone from the YLP team to talk about uh, the ISB YLP program. Right. Uh, these programs, yes, they have different rounds. Uh, you might want to go and check on the websites, uh, their website. Uh, they also have criteria on till when you should have finished your graduation or till when, you know, they have specific deadlines. So you might want to check all these deadlines also on their school website. You can just remember the name and then go ahead and, uh, you know, look at the school websites and figure out what are the kind of, uh, you know, deadlines they have so that you can go ahead and apply. Right. So with that, let me uh, just start with um, inviting Yashwan. So Yashwan, if you could just uh, share your screen now so that, you know, we okay. can focus on the YLP part. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Yashwan Pulumati. I'm a senior manager with the admissions department at ISB. Uh, a little bit about my background. I've done my undergraduate in finance uh, from Winthrop University in South Carolina. And then I did my MBA from University of Nebraska, Lincoln. And then I also went on to do my PhD, which I'm currently doing from the uh, Nebraska Lincoln as well. Uh, so that being said, uh, let me just go on to our, our presentation for today and talk about the YLP program. Let's start talking about the main advantages you get with the YLP program. So, uh, I want to talk a little bit about industry benchmarks and how to go about choosing a good MBA program. The first thing that we usually look at when we are choosing any program, be it MBA or be it an undergrad program, be it a MS program is rankings. And that's why we tend to accentuate our rankings in our uh, sessions. Uh, according to Financial Times, ISB is ranked number 28 in the world and Bloomberg ranks ISB number four in the Asia Pacific region. And according to Forbes, ISB ranks is number seven in the world. Um, also these other uh, logos here, let me just take a few minutes to talk about these as well. ISB works with London Business School, MIT, the Fletcher School of Business, the Fletcher School, I'm sorry, Kellogg, Wharton. Um, so ISB does more than just exchange programs with these schools. ISB has an exchange collaboration with more than 40 schools. But the reason we uh, put these schools on most of our sessions and on our websites is because these were ISB's founding schools. So ISB works with these schools in terms of exchanges for students, faculty exchanges, research collaboration, and a lot of content and curriculum building. If you see ISB's curriculum and content, it is very similar to what these top schools would have. Also, another big advantage with ISB's uh, YLP PGP program is its faculty. We have a unique portfolio model of, of faculty wherein we have resident faculty and also we have visiting faculty. So what this does for you is we bring in experts from their respective fields. For instance, you can look at the logos on the side here on the screen. We have faculty coming from all of these schools. We have more faculty from different schools with these are just some of the logos we have listed on here. And 100% of the faculty that are part of ISB's MBA program or that teach at ISB's MBA program are PhD holders from top schools around the world. Also an exciting or a novel thing about ISP's faculty model is that the students get to pick their faculty. So they, they, we have what we call a bidding process and the class bids as a whole and they get to select which faculty they want um, to teach a class, for them to teach a class. For instance, uh, we have a course called Complexity in Business Management. 
And every year we have a bunch of professors listed on the screen. Students get to bid and pick which professor they want. And for the past three years, we've been inviting Mr. Edward Rogers, who is a research scientist at NASA. So he has been coming down to ISB to teach this course. So what this does is it essentially makes faculty uh, bring their A game to class. So they're always on their toes um, because unless faculty, faculty are bringing their best, their contemporary, their, their uh, research is on par with the best in the world, you know, they're teaching you skills that industry wants, they're not going to get picked. And if they don't get picked, they're not going to get paid. So basically faculty is made accountable for the students. Uh, also a few um, minutes about careers here. These are some of the schools, some of the industries that come to hire at ISB. If you guys, if you guys have done in-depth research into business schools, you might have observed a lot of business schools are thrown into buckets, such as, you know, this is a strategy school or that's a finance school, but ISB pays a lot of attention to the kind of industries that it brings in and it brings in a diverse mix of industries. And no matter what industry you look at, we have the top companies in that industry coming onto campus to hire. For instance, for finance, financial services, we have Citibank, we have JP Morgan. For e-commerce, we have the Flipkart, Amazon. For tech, we have Google, Apple, and so on. For consulting, we have McKinsey, we have um, IMG, we have um, DCG, and so on. Also, ISB is known as a school for change. So if you look, if you were to look at these numbers, 79% of the people were able to make a functional shift after the PA, after they completed their PGP program. And similarly, 78.5% of the people were able to make an industry shift. So a lot of people come in thinking they want to go into consulting or they want to become a product manager in a tech company, you know, but during the course of that one year, a lot of transformation takes place. They're exposed to so many different things, diverse perspectives, exposed to people with different, um, different experiences from different backgrounds. And all of these, you know, um, come together and bring about these numbers here. Um, also, if you were to see a couple of numbers should stand out to you guys in this slide. La the past uh, batch, we've had 884 students with uh, 1,309 offers. And also the number here, um, the average pre versus post MBA salary, uh, ISB clocked in at 188% increase. And this is the fourth highest in the world. Uh, another interesting fact about careers is ISB does its careers a little differently. We have a dedicated team of um, people, a 20% dedicated team who are full-time in charge of bringing in the best companies to ISB campus. For instance, for the finance vertical, we have a guy who has 20 years of corporate finance experience that heads the finance vertical. So he's the one who's in charge of bringing in the finance companies. And similarly, we have from, for FMCG and different industries. Um, ISB's another big advantage is its network. So this is a resource available to you, not only while you're doing the program, but before you do the program and also after you do the program. So IS, ISB's alumni are spread across the world in all the top companies. ISB has more than 10,000 alumni out of which 500 have already gone on to the C-suite of their companies. So these guys are like the decision makers, like top of their departments. And we also have 500 plus who are, um, you know, who have their own startups or entrepreneurs have family businesses. Uh, just um, a breakup of industries here, prominent industries. 60% <clears throat> of our alumni go into either finance, tech, consulting, e-commerce, or healthcare. So now coming to the crux of today's presentation, I want to talk about the YLP program itself. So like Shrikala had mentioned, it's a program for people without work experience. So it's exclusively for people in their pre-final and final year of their college. So if you have any sort of full-time work experience or if you've graduated, you wouldn't be able to apply for this program. So yeah, it's a foundation program that leads to the end program. So if you are a pre-final year, if you are say your third year or second year of your college and you had one more year to finish college, you would be joining this program in 2023. And if you're a final year in college, you'd be joining in 2022. Because a couple of things, this, this is a deferred admission that is contingent upon 
you graduating and getting 20 months of work experience. So let me highlight a few um, components of this program. Firstly, during these 20 months of working after you graduate, we have learning weekends. <clears throat> wherein you fly to ISB campus, you take classes with faculty, you interact with current students, you meet your batch mates, the other YLP admits, and then you also interact with alumni and industry leaders. And we also have another thing called the tricep program. So this is done in collaboration with two other universities. One is uh, Shenghua University in China and the other is NUS Singapore. And um, I can't see you guys, but I'm sure a couple of people have uh, eyebrows raised. Don't worry guys, we're not gonna send you to China right now. <laughs> uh, and it doesn't, it, 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 not, it doesn't necessarily have to be the same universities every year. The universities will be changing. But what the tricep program is, is that it's a three week program where in one week you'll be going to uh, Shenghua and you'll be taking classes at Shenghua with the other YLPs in Shenghua, the local Chinese um, people. And then you'll be going to NUS wherein they also have their um, similar YLP program. You'll be taking classes with them uh, making corporate visits and then finally you'll be back to ILP Hyderabad wherein you'll take your final week of classes and this is all part of the YLP program. Uh, finally the admission process it's a three-step admission process the first stage you will only need an application form wherein we get general background information uh, such as uh, your education details your GPA your extracurriculars your awards and achievements and so on and then we'll also require you to write an essay. But if you guys were to observe, at the, for the first stage of the application, you wouldn't need any kind of test code. You wouldn't need a GMAT or a GRE. All you need is an application form, an essay, and the application. And then if you're shortlisted for the, for the second round, that is when you will need the GMAT or the GRE. And along with these test scores, you will have to write two essays and have one letter of recommendation or an evaluation. And finally, after the second round, you'll be called for an interview. So that is basically how the admission process is broken up. But right now, since we're close to the first round of the admission process, all you'll have to worry is about the first round. And if you also observe here, we have close to four months of time from the first to second round. That's uh, usually um, uh, ample time for somebody to prepare for their GMAT or GMAT. Um, finally, we have a QR code here. If you were to scan this QR code, it'll take you directly onto our login page, wherein you can log in, you can put your credentials and just explore what the admission uh, packet is like, you know, what questions we are asking you, what the, what the essay topic for this year is, and so on. Uh, so that is all I have from my end today, but um, I'll be taking questions from you guys. So if you have any questions, please feel free to ask me. Sure. So thank you, Vashant. Uh, I have a few questions which, are, you know, we have collated from students that they have. If you could just okay. take us to the slide where uh, you're talking about the different rounds and deadlines. Uh, uh, sure. so I would just want to, you know, talk about some things yeah. Yeah, from here. So um, uh, some students have asked, uh, you know, is there like an average GMAT or an average GRE score uh, that people look at, especially for ISB? What, what, are, what are those uh, or, you know, is there anything around that if you could help us with that? Sure. So we don't have like a cutoff per se, uh -huh. but, we, but, but we do have, so once the class is made, so every year, once we have a class profile, we do put up the average GMAT GRE scores for that class. But that being said, we do not shortlist anyone simply on the basis of a GMAT or GRE score. It's a holistic process wherein we have an algorithm that assigns a certain weight to each component of the application packet. For instance, we have a certain weightage for awards and achievements. We have a certain weightage for the essay component. We have a certain weightage for your GPA and your GMAT and GRE and how diverse your profile is and so on. Okay. So, uh, and what is more preferable, uh, you know, like a lot of people say, you know, they've taken their GMAT or they've taken their GRE. Is there something around that in terms of how many percentage of people who apply to YLP are the people who apply with the GMAT score or a GRE score? So these numbers keep changing every year. And uh, to be honest, we don't have any preference, be it a GMAT or GRE. Uh -huh. 
-huh. We're just looking at the overall um, composition of the profile and we, we are not like biased towards one exam. And whenever we get this question, we always tell the people to take the exam they're more comfortable with. Okay. Okay. So uh, say for example, there is a student who's applied to the YLP program while he's in the third year, uh, mm -hmm. which is uh, typically mm -hmm. in the, you know, fifth or sixth sem. And uh, then they, you know, say for some reason it didn't go through and then they apply uh, again in the final, just before the final sem, which is the seventh sem, right? Mm -hmm. Or the, you know, because January will be, you know, if you're looking at March, they'll be in the final semester, right? Eighth semester. Mm -hmm. uh, how does that look for, uh, you know, as a reapplicant? So, um, is there a disadvantage over there or, you know, are they, is it considered as a fresh application or what should their focus be if they are reapplicants? Okay. So firstly, for the YLP, we don't have anything um, such as a reapplicant. So we uh, strongly encourage pre-final years to apply because a lot of people that get into the program in their final year are people who have also applied in the pre-final year. This also allows people to kind of gauge where they stand vis-a-vis -vis the rest of the applicant pool. For instance, you know, we say when, when a person loses out in the second round, you know, they know where to improve at. If they lose out in the first round, you know, they know where to improve at. So we strongly suggest that you apply in the pre-final year because we have no uh, bias against people who are applying again. And we, uh, we don't consider it as a reapplicant, basically. Right. Right. So uh, I have a question here by Soumya. She says she's in the, uh, sorry, he, third year. And yeah. you say that you want to apply to ISB. Yes, uh, Soumya, you will have to take your GMAT this year, which is by August 31st, 2020. Uh, right, uh, Yashwant? Yeah, that's correct. So for the first round of application, you won't need your GMAT or GRE. But if you're shortlisted and you go on to the second round, that is when you'll have to submit a valid GMAT or GRE score. Right. Uh, there's one more question by uh, Akshay. He says he has two years of work experience. Can I apply for YLP? Is this two years of full-time work experience, Akshay? Uh, yeah, I guess so. Okay, so you graduated from college. Right. Okay, yeah, you wouldn't be up able to apply for the YLP, but you can apply for the PGP program directly. So that is same, the MBA program. So the YLP is a different route to get into the MBA program or the PGP program. Um, but since you already have two years of work experience, you cannot apply through the YLP route. You can apply through the, the mainstream PGP route. Right. So uh, for all of you uh, who are attending this webinar, uh, I'll just quickly talk about the YLP. This is specifically for people who are, you know, have no experience right now. And if you are less than two years experience, you can also apply. Uh, Yashwant, you would want to talk about the early entry option. This is for people with less than two years experience also quickly. Yeah. So the early entry program is again, it's a conditional admission wherein you're given an admit contingent upon you finishing two years of work experience. Correct. Yeah. And for those who have more than two years experience, go and apply to the normal PGP program. Right. All right. Uh, so in terms of the different rounds that you have, right? So uh, round one says uh, you have one essay uh, and then round two has two essays. So uh, is there any percentage of like an acceptance rate around each round? So this is also a question that a lot of people ask us. So I thought, uh, you know, like say, for example, if a uh, thousand people apply in round one, how, how many actually go to round two and how many go to round three? How, how does that work? Um, again, these numbers are kind of up in the air because they depend on the quality of applications and the quantity of applications also. But in general, if I have to say, it's usually a one is to six ratio. So if we have 60 applicants, we'd probably take 10 applicants further to the second round. And again, it would be a one, one is to six ratio or similar to that one is to six, one is to five ratio. Okay. Okay. Uh, we have someone, oh, I'll, I'll just read out a few more questions here. Mm -hmm. uh, Tejo says, I'm in the final year of a graduation and I'm enro enrolling for the master's program in finance for the first year. Can I apply to deferred MBA program? So for YLP, does this work? Uh, uh, yes, he, he's in the first year of his master's program, right? Yes. Yes, yes, that works. Yeah. 
yeah so yeah so he's currently in the final year but he's enrolled for the first year of the master's program so i'm assuming he will uh, apply to uh, he won't want to finish the master's program and during right. the masters he wants to apply to ilp okay yeah that that is absolutely fine right uh, there's one more question here by akash uh, which says are there more chances of getting through ylp compared to pgp <laughs> uh, <laughs> so again that would depend on your profile akash but um obviously when you're doing it through the pgp route you know the factors to consider would be different because isb would be looking at your work experience also and then we would be looking at your quality of work experience uh, the kind of impact you've made in your workplace the kind of company you work for and all of that and definitely you would be competing with uh, people with work experience so you'd be competing with say somebody with 5 years 7 years 9 years of work experience because the average work experience for the pgp program is 4.5 or close to that 4.4 4.5 years um so that would be a different set of parameters we would be looking at and that would kind of depend on where um how you plan your journey out but um this is definitely i don't want to say like a i don't want to give out an absolute answer but this is definitely a good chance to get into the pgp program right so if you look at uh, you know like uh, yashwant already mentioned right so uh, it's more on the uh, about the competition you are facing if you feel uh, you can uh, match the competition with respect to your work experience or the kind of uh, you know opportunity that you have had the uh, the kind of work that uh, you have done uh, then maybe that would be pgp might be a better idea but if you already have you have a stronger profile or a better gmat or a gre score right now maybe applying to a ylp would be a good idea so uh, yashwan there is one more question here mm -hmm. uh, say for example someone applies to ylp and then mm -hmm. you know uh, for they don't go through and they apply after 2 years they want to apply for a pgp mm -hmm. are they considered as reapplicants then no they are not considered as reapplicant unless you apply to pgp you don't get selected and then you apply to pgp again you're not considered as reapplicant okay great great that's awesome uh there's one more question here uh, by apurva he says uh, i have an experience of 2 years 4 months and one certificate course in finance from italy mm -hmm. i completed my graduation in 2016 mm -hmm. will having a certificate of finance affect my application in the wrong manner uh no i don't see um akash i don't see why that would uh, negatively impact your uh, application at all right so i think uh, what you should focus on apurva is if you could highlight on what made you take finance and how you can connect it to what you're doing now so nothing goes away so your focus <laughs> should be how you actually connect everything together to uh, you know convince the admission committee on why you did it and you know how it's helping you in the long run or will help you in the long run i think that should be the entire focus right. uh, let me just look at some other questions is there any other question there are no more questions so i guess um, okay there's one more question i'm the third year of engineering and want to join rotman after my grads can you please help me uh, samya uh, if you are looking at an mba program uh, and if it's not part of any of the deferred enrollment program you will need at least 2 years of experience uh, even to apply so my you know even for schools like rotman you will have to have 2 years of experience if you actually apply to this program right so i think with that we have uh, let me just quickly check if there are any more questions uh, i guess there are no more questions thank you so much uh, uh, yashwant for joining us today and helping us through this uh, all the understanding about ylp and uh, the isb program uh, thank mm -hmm. you so much and for all others okay how would you okay there's one more question sorry i'll just quickly take this that's fine that's fine yeah. there's how would the admission committee decide whether you should go for hyderabad or mohali so it's a random allocation um you obviously get to put your preference down on your application once you're selected if um you want your uh, you wish to go to hyderabad or mohali but it's entirely a random process and it's not done by merit so yeah it's a random process right cool 
So thank you so much uh, for others. You could go to crackable.com if you're looking at help for GMAT. Uh, you could go to our GMAT page and see what are the kind of options available for online or classroom if you're in Bangalore. Uh, if you are anywhere else in the world, you could look at the online option. Uh, we also help you with your profile evaluation. So, so you could go ahead and fill in the profile evaluation form so that we can help you with that. Um, thank you so much, everyone. Thank you so much, Yashwan. Thank you and, uh, for having us over here. Yeah. <clears throat> thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much, guys. All the best.